It was the kind of feel-good story that warms your heart. Jessica Ann Smith, a mother and fitness buff, said she was battling cancer at just 32 years old, but was rallying support, encouraging friends and family to hashtag fight like a Jessica. With medical bills piling up, supporters answered the call, raising over $10,000 on GoFundMe and Facebook to help. People are coming out of the woodworks to help, which is, I mean, like, will restore anyone's faith in humanity. But investigators say it was all a lie perpetuated by Smith to dupe Good Samaritans into giving her money for a disease they say she didn't have, a hoax that led to her arrest. She made people believe that she had a very serious cancer diagnosis. The fact is, she didn't have cancer. It started in June when Smith told friends she was facing a mountain of medical bills while battling colon cancer, detailing her recovery on social media. Donations started pouring in. So the sad part of these type of GoFund or fundraising website scams and cases is that they are preying upon people's hearts in the most sad and vulnerable ways. And because of our charitability, we become the biggest targets for this type of charges and cases. I actually have some like chemo burns right now. Her story gained added attention in July. I'll be looking forward to posting that I'm in remission. When Smith was invited to speak about her diagnosis on the podcast, The Ever Evolving Truth. The doctor is taking my history as he's looking at my blood work and he's like I really think you have colon cancer. Jeff Berg and Terry Coleman are the hosts of the podcast. Honestly the, the whole interview seemed off from from the very beginning. She was kind of going through like a cancer checklist. You know she was feeling sick. She was taking off of work because of, of her illness. She was going through this checklist and it was almost too perfect. She was very nondescript with her treatment, her diagnosis and just used very vague language. Online, people started to question Smith's story. People have tried to say I'm scamming people. If anyone straight up came up to me and was like, I think you're faking this, I, I literally would say, OK, you're coming to chemo with me on Monday. <laughs> she reappeared on the podcast four days later, taking aim at the people accusing her of lying. Here is my um, fitness for duty form with the word cancer on it. Smith stood by her story, but what she didn't know was that police were already investigating after they say her own husband came forward telling them he did not believe his wife had cancer. Her second interview is really where, where it kind of derailed. We didn't know exactly how we were going to find it all the time, but we were definitely like, I can't believe that she's actually doing this. According to police, Jessica's story began to unravel. They say her doctor told them those photos, which she claimed showed her receiving chemotherapy, was not chemotherapy at all, but an iron infusion for anemia. Even worse, when they tried to verify her claims of having surgery, investigators say they were told the doctor Smith claimed operated on her wasn't even in the hospital at the time, and that Smith was never a patient. Jessica's worst enemy is herself. A number of occasions she went onto the media proclaiming the sickness of this very rare hereditary colon cancer. Her statements are going to be the most damning things against her in this trial. While crowdsourcing websites have raised billions for noble causes around the world, Smith is not the first person accused of taking advantage of people's goodwill. She's in um, intestinal failure and we don't know how much longer she has. Colorado mom Kelly Renee Turner's bucket list for her terminally ill daughter went viral in 2017. Her story even made its way to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Seven-year-old Olivia Gaunt died from what her mother claimed was a rare disease, but authorities now say it was all a lie. The first child dies, the mother then induces illness on yet another child so she can continue this fraud, continue getting attention. Turner was indicted on two counts of murder and 11 other charges, including receiving fraudulent Medicaid payments of more than half a million dollars and theft associated with a GoFundMe account. Her case is pending. I was driving down 95 and <laughs> ran out of gas, so I pulled over on to the side of the road. And last year, Kate McClure's seemingly heartwarming story went viral. She said she was stranded on the outskirts of Philadelphia when homeless veteran Johnny Bobbitt Jr. spent his last $20 to buy her gas. You know, she, she needed the help. She took the help. With the title Paying It Forward, the GoFundMe page coordinated by McClure and her then-boyfriend, Mark D'Amico, raised more than $400,000. It's like winning the lottery. But the ruse unraveled in a shocking twist. The entire campaign was predicated on a lie. Authorities say it was all a coordinated scam from the start. The cover photo on the page staged. 
They say all three were in on the elaborate hoax. D'Amico, McClure, and Bobbitt conspired to pass off a fake, feel-good story that would compel donors to contribute to their cause. McClure and Bobbitt both pled guilty in federal court. D'Amico has pleaded not guilty. It's a shame because those three people really ruined it for people who yeah. really need the help. In her podcast interview, Jessica Smith criticizes the trio, blaming them for making life difficult for people who actually need to raise money. They had to refund all those people. But soon, it was Smith's fundraisers owing refunds, as both her GoFundMe and her Facebook efforts were shut down. Facebook tells ABC News that the fundraiser violated their terms and that refunds will be processed for all donors. And a GoFundMe spokesperson tells us they are working with law enforcement and they also will refund all donors. Meanwhile, Smith is facing separate charges in Delaware for identity theft and criminal impersonation of a law enforcement officer. She took advantage of people's generosity and everyone's worst fear of a cancer diagnosis to get money for herself. For Nightline, I'm Diane Macedo in New York. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.